Hello everybody, welcome back to a new tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is about finding the internal loadings. Uh, actually, this is a response to one of the questions by one of the subscribers of the channel, so let's take a look. The question says, determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross-section at point G of the beam shown in the figure, each joint is pin connected. So we have this beam with the loadings as uh, it shows on the screen. We will try to find the internal loadings, that is the shear force and the bending moment and the normal force. Okay, so how do we do this? First of all, this is the free body diagram, so we will uh, do the free body diagram to make the picture look easier for us for analysis and now we will do the reactions so we have at joint C we have one reaction which is CX at joint E we have two reactions which are EX and EY and the way I chose the direction of the reactions is just by looking at how would the joint move if the loading is applied so if I apply the 15 100 pounds and the 300 pound per foot uh, distributed load I would expect joint C to resist the loading to the right and I would expect joint E to resist the, the loading to the left and upward anyways if one of these reactions turns out to be negative that means my assumption is wrong so how do we do this? First we need to make sure that all the distributed forces are concentrated forces and uh, basically that's converting the 300 pound per foot into a single force. How do we do this? We found the area of the triangle which is one half of the 300 times the 6 foot and we concentrate this force at a point that is two feet or let's put it this way one-third of the distance from the 300 one-third of the distance of the six foot is the two feet okay so what do we do now basically we go ahead and do the summation of the forces in the x-direction and we get CX minus EX equals zero and when we do the summation of the forces in the Y direction we get minus 1500 minus 900 plus EY equals to zero and from that we can solve for EY we get EY equals 2400 and if we take the summation of the moments about uh, point E we get minus 3CX the 3 is the distance and the CX is the force then plus 1500 times 10 which is the total length of the beam then plus 900 times 4 from that we get CX equals 6200 and from CX minus EX equals 0, we can substitute CX to be 6200 or 6200 and we can solve for EX to be 6200. Okay, now what? Now the next step is to try to draw the beam with all the forces acting on it. That is basically saying the forces can be that are directly applied on it, for example the 1500 or the distributed load, and the forces resulting from other members connected to it. So we have members AB, BD, and BC. These are the members connected to the beam. I know you can tell that AB and BD are directly connected to the beam, so these are the, po uh, the members we need to find, meaning AB, members AB and BD okay so I need to find the forces in these members so I can basically replace these members with point loads acting on the beam either in tension 
or in compression either pushing the beam down or pulling the beam up how can we do this we take a cross section in each of the members I'm interested in just like that and I end up having the following member AB I will assume member AB to be in tension same thing goes for BD and the same goes for BC okay so now we need to analyze joint B to find the forces in members BA BD and BC just a quick note here that if I'm interested in point G I only need the force in member AB because as you will see that we will take a cross section at joint at point G and we will study the left part of the resulting section which of course you can tell that forces BD and BC of course they don't act on the new section but just you know to get as much information as possible we will do all the members okay so joint B we need to sum the forces about joint B and all the forces I'm doing they, sh they either should be on the x-axis or the y-axis meaning that any inclined force should be resolved into major components x and y so if this is the joint B and I'm assuming the BC, BD and BA are all tension forces I need to resolve the force BA how can we do this? if I realize that the force BA lies on the triangle like shown I need to resolve this using the information about the angle it's either using the cosine or the sine of the angle okay so if this is the triangle and I know theta let's assume for now I know theta force BA can be resolved into BA sine theta acting along the x direction and BA cosine theta acting along the y direction but instead of going into the finding the angles and probably will get nasty numbers uh, you even even if you don't remember that uh, uh, the uh, sine of a certain angle is a uh, one half or a square root of three over three or one over the square root of two it's always to try to avoid dealing with angles okay this is how I usually tell my students to do it so sine theta equals 4 over 5 that's just one of the properties of the right triangle and cosine theta is 3 over 5 so instead of saying BA sine theta I can say BA four, multiplied by 4 over 5 which is basically sine theta and the same thing goes for BA multiplied by 3 over 5 which is of course cosine theta okay so the way I look at the uh, joint B basically as you see now it, all the forces are resolved either on the X or the Y axis so this is the joint now I substitute BC because I already know BC BC is basically the reaction uh, force at joint C okay now if I do the summation of the forces in the X I can solve for BA to be 7750 pounds and if I do the summation of the forces in the Y direction I can solve for BD to be minus 4650 okay now so these are the forces I'm having right now for point G we cut a section through point G to expose the interior moldings how can we do this just take a section through point G this is the section now in this section I have an inclined force again 
which is 7,750 pounds and remember if I'm st trying to find the NG which is the normal force or VG which is the shear force or even if I'm trying to find the moment MG all the forces should be lying on either the X axis or the Y axis so what's my next step is to resolve this force into its component the X component and the Y component like this okay so again I use the same triangle these uh, the numbers of the triangle we ca uh, we got them from the dimension of the problem itself we can go back and look at the dimension of the problem but uh, probably in the next slide or two we will see how we got the 4, 3 and 5 and anyway I have this force along the length 5 so I need to resolve it into the X and Y components so along the X I will divide the 4 over the 5 and multiply it by the force the 4 over the 5 is the cosine of the angle in this case and the 3 over the 5 is the sine of the angle so and 4 over 5 multiplied by 7750 7, will give me this number and 7750 will give me uh, multiplied by 3 over 5 will give me 4650 pounds now my section is complete all I need to do now is get the summation of the force in the X if I do this I can solve for NG to be negative 6200 zero, zero. and if I do the summation of the forces in the Y I can get VG to be 3150 and if I do the, sum, uh, the summation of the moments about point G and solve for MG I will get 6300 pounds foot okay let me just go back very quickly to see where we got the th this triangle right here okay the triangle I'm talking about is the 3 4 5 or 4 3 5 triangle the triangle will look the 4 we got it from these two numbers and the 3 is from this number so by Pythagorean theorem th the length of this member is 5 okay and I hope uh, that clears the or that answers the question for uh, my subscriber and hope to see you in future tutorials thank you